Alrighty. This means that we're going live on YouTube and Facebook uh, in about 10 seconds. All right, there we are. Okay, so um, we're going to officially start with um, our 37th episode of the Tuning Fork. This is our third year of broadcasting, and we have about over 3,000 minutes of uh, remarkable programming. And today we have our friend Chow Zing Gay. Thank you, Chow. Um, there he is. Thank you, John. There he is. There he is. So we're going to start with our, our little uh, um, logo video, uh, the tuning fork. And welcome to everybody in the, uh, you know, the Ethereum space of uh, YouTube and and uh, and Facebook Live. Here we go. The Tuning Fork. The Tuning Fork. Setting the tone for cultural activism through weekly encounters with cultural activists worldwide. Live on ICAI, Institute for Cultural Activism International. So it's so great, uh, Chow, how we met. And um, you're, you're having another person there, Emily, Vera. Um, our friend, you see, I, I was driving um, my mother actually to uh, Fort Lee, New Jersey from Washington, DC or near there. And uh, we took, you have to admit people, we took um, a few minutes to stop in Philadelphia at the um, Philadelphia Museum to see Marcel Duchamp, some mm. of the work of Marcel Duchamp. And in the exhibition, I saw a young woman who was walking across the room to look into the last uh, work of art that Marcel Duchamp made. And um, I had a conversation with this young woman uh, she's Eileen, and she's here today. Can you say hi, Eileen? Hi, everyone. That that hi. was me. Yeah, the young woman at the <laughs> yeah. And so, within a very few minutes, Eileen and I decided that she would be uh, working with Emily and I at the institute, and um, and there she <laughs> is, and uh, she's our scholar in residence. We we need a scholar. So now we have a really good one. And through Eileen, um, we met uh, Chow. Am I, are you admitting? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So then we, Margaret, um, Margaret, can you just hold your hand up for a second there? Margaret and Emily and I have been doing performances. Uh, Margaret is one of our board of directors of the Institute for Cultural Activism International. And we hope to recruit Vera real soon, you know, as, as we're hoping that she'll agree to be an advisor and a collaborator. But um, regardless of, of what happened over the summer, which was pretty extensive, we were traveling in Italy and other places in New York eventually. And, and then um, Eileen mentioned that, that Chow, that you could film for us at, at Wall Street and the oculus and that's how we met so it's a quite a you know actually you could blame marcel duchamp <laughs> i think that marcel duchamp is responsible and um you know so that's on him we're really happy about this this wonderful combination of friends and collaborators and um, we thank you all really very very much daniel's there I think you're probably in Chinatown. Uh, Isabel is in, um, where is she now? What town? Grand Michigan, Rapids. Rapid. Huh? Yeah. Grand Rapids, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, Daniel is there on the upper peninsula of Mi Lake Michigan. Is he still there, Daniel? Ron, I mean, Ron. Ron, Ron he, Daniels. Ron Daniels. He's in and out. Lake oh, there he, there he is. On Lake Huron. On, you're on Lake Huron. And uh, Eva is here from Vienna. <laughs> Eva Sinzinger, friend of mine from Vienna. 
filmmaker. <laughs> Where is she? Well, all the way down. She doesn't have the camera on. Okay, cool. Oh, there hey, she is. Hey, Eba. <laughs> How are you, Eba? Fine. Hello. I'm just looking what you are doing. <laughs> uh, we feel we feel uh, honored by your 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 looking. <laughs> Thank you for looking. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me, Margaret. Um, Margaret, sure. uh, Eba is in. Did you say she's in Vienna? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and Vera is in Paris. And uh, Daisuke. Uh, I'm in Toronto. Toronto. Well, and Ida, where are you? Hi, everyone. I'm from uh, Luxembourg. Are you in Luxembourg now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Akane? <laughs> Sorry. Akane? Where's Akane? Nakamori. She's in Japan. I'm not. Uh, I'm French. I'm French. I'm Egyptian. I'm not French. Okay. I'm a little bit sick. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, now, um, we're all here, and some people will probably join us, but um, congratulations to uh, Chow for your work, and we're very, um, really thrilled. Uh, you know, we, have, we create a kind of energy here, a collective community kind of synergy here, and uh, it's really interesting in 2023 now to talk about what uh, Chow has had your life experience a little bit in your work. And um, can you just tell us a little bit? It, I know that we've spoken to you yesterday and today, but anyway, how are you? Good, good. <laughs> and and um, what was your early childhood like? Where, where did you grow up? And, and uh, what was that? Um, what was your education like, for example? Oh, uh, I grew up uh, in Henan province. It's the middle of China. It's a farmer, uh, rural countryside. Uh, most people are doing the farmer uh, work there. Okay. Yeah. And did your family do farming work? Uh, yes, my family uh, doing some uh, farmer work until my uh, high school, yeah, graduated from high school. I even had to go to the farmer uh, to help my parents. So, yeah, that's why I I uh, swear I should go to the college because I really hate that job in the farming place. Um, so, YouTube isn't working. Yeah. So, um. So Chow, you did farming work yourself. Uh, yes, yeah. But but the idea was um, you were expected, right? As the oldest son, you were expected by tradition uh, to um, become head of the farm eventually. Can you let her in later? Uh, traditionally, uh, I'm the the last son in my family. I have uh, two sisters and uh, one brother. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, I was very boring. Uh, you know, all most of my friends they have to work in the farm, and nobody play with me. So sometimes I go to the uh, place. The most are wheat. Uh, you know, the grow up wheat. Not wheat is the wheat. Yes, and, wheat. Uh, yeah. So I cut some grass. Send to my friends because they need that. But I don't. We don't feed uh, pigs or sheep, so uh, I I I don't need a grass. So yeah. I work that just to you know to social with each other. Now, can can everybody hear Chow? Just like yes, okay. All right, so. What happened to you? You you wanted to leave the uh, culture of farming, and you you went I, to university, huh? Yes, uh, uh, my family was very poor, you know. But uh, 
uh, I think it's 2000, uh, it's 1990s. So they are built a um, factory to uh, produce the steel because my family was uh, doing some uh, recycle job. So my parents decided to, you know, if they could do recycle, they, they want to mail the metals to produce some new stuff. But at that time, my school, my, uh, my middle school was, uh, you know, the poor area middle school is a very poor place. It's such like a jail, you know, uh, the middle school closed every week. Like, uh, you know, we cannot go home. We spend a week, like six days and a half in the school. We are uh, sleeping there, eat there, and uh, it's kind of, uh, kind of like a jail. So we have no newspaper. We don't know nothing. Um, yeah. After my, uh, my middle school, I didn't get in the high school, but my mom was the... Uh, from a very poor family. She dropped off at 10 years old. So she said, you are the smallest son. So our family, uh, no one get in the high school. So probably you should go to the high school to finish our dream. But I didn't uh, get in high school because the test for me is very hard. Um, in that place, I think it's 315 people, only have seven people get in the high school. It's, you know, most of the people, you cannot pass the test. Their, their education resource is very limited. So my mom uh, makes some decision. She said, okay, probably we can donate some money to the high school. So give you an opportunity as a standby student, you know, at that time, I was very young. I, I hate that place. I thought, you know, everything is, is not like a, like a real, it's, you know, school, family, school, family, and school is like a jail. And I couldn't sleep even. So I, I thought, okay, so probably that is the way to run off that place. <laughs> That's the story. Yeah, I, I left it there. Okay, so just a second, because it, it seems like you, at some point, uh, learned about art, and um, something changed in your in your direction. Is that right? Oh uh, yes, because I uh, in high uh, in high school, I cannot. I know I I cannot get in the college because my score is lower and the, the the last one you know every time they print a uh, paper like from the first one to the last one I always the last one so it's very shame in the class I think you know I have to find a way to you know uh, separate isolate myself with other students so I found how to uh, drawing I just draw some pe some person yeah Wow. I mean, that's a good way to give me an excuse to isolate myself, to face the shame. You know, I, I'm studying not very well. Yeah. So that's the turning point. Why drawing? Why not some other, you know, expression, some, some other method of expression? Why drawing? Uh, my father was a captor, you know, doing some woodwork. So uh, for me, the high school gives the opportunity to the sport person, but I'm not strong. I'm not interested in the boxing or some running, but I'm not good for that. I think, okay, and the drawing is the way probably I can hide myself. Yeah, I tried, but I, do, I did good. Actually, and right. then, uh, yeah, I have a cousin, you know, you, one day, you, yeah. Joe, you, you made it to Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you made it to Wall Street, actually, man. Yeah, that's, all the way yeah, that's, to Wall Street. 
Yeah. By drawing. Yeah. But, so your cousin, uh, what about your cousin? No, it's my cousin is one day, you know, he ran away from his home. He tried to suicide himself because he loved a girl, but his parents didn't agree with the girl. So he ran away from home. He going to the he went to the city, the Zhengzhou uh, uh, city. So he, one day he called me. He said uh, he's living in a rooftop. He said I saw a place. There uh, have a place right. They can teach drawing. If you can draw, you can get in the college. Wow. I, <laughs> I just oh. follow him run right away. And half years later, my mom found me in the school. And he called me, where are you? I said, I'm in Zhengzhou. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, let's look at this film here. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about that film. Yeah. This one. Never heard? Is that one? Never heard. New news. Yeah. New news. OK, let's go with that. Here we go. Gao, so, what is what is this? Uh, after I graduated from the school, the college, and uh, uh, I was very boring, you know, with the work or something like this. And one day, I, you know, uh, my friend and I, and uh, on the chat, we said. Uh, we won't go to see this world because, you know, from our rural countryside, we always have a dream to see how this great country it is because we learn from the TV, from school, our country is getting rich, getting, you know, powerful, something like that. And we thought, okay, we are very poor, you know, we don't, we only have, you know, some very little uh, money. So my friend and I, we decided we bring a Chinese map, you know, the big map. There is only has the city to the, another city, the main road. And we said, okay, let's go to see something. Yeah, we, you know, we went to the trip. We don't know where to go. We just, uh, you know, uh, bring a stone, uh, hold in hand. And a lot of my friends, guys, oh my guys, I said, which way you want to go? My friend said, if you're right, you will make the decision to go where, to go which way. So yeah. we from Beijing to Inner Mongolia and to Vietnam. Yeah. So did you, did you think of this film as a, one of your sort of art projects? At first I didn't, uh, Thought is a is an art project. I just we just thought seeing uh, look at this project as a fan because we are. I suppose I don't know nothing, but you know I want to go far place to see what happened there. Yeah, but, uh, so uh, I bring a camera and a DV, and uh, we didn't know to make a documentary film. We just uh, record everything. We met the person, talk with somebody, sleep in the outside. Yeah. But after we back, and I thought, oh my God, this is something, you know, it's, it's, it's really something overwhelming. Yeah. Okay, but when you, when you came back, you were a different person. Yes. So your your point of view was 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 new. 
Yes. Uh, yes, because uh, I remember that the first day we out of Beijing, I just to say something like, uh, oh, this country is so beautiful, you know, it's much better than German. <laughs> but at that, that time, I didn't know what is German. I just uh, saw some news in the, you know, they say the Western is much better than China. I said, oh, this is a much better five times than German. <laughs> But after I come back, I look like, you know, the very disappointed person. I see, oh my God, this world is so, you know, full of disaster. And so many people, you know, they, you know, it's like uh, my, my heart broken. I know a lot of the truth. I, I see, yeah. You know, that's a very interesting, um, kind of like an allegory experience. You know, like the, the Buddha, when the Buddha left the magical palace where everything was perfect and went out, you know, and saw the people sick and dying, then this Buddha couldn't get enough of, of reality. And he couldn't get enough of, of contact with the real world, you know, so, Let's look at this next film, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about what this is. This one. What What is this? Uh, this is a place, uh, you know, the people are working in the construction place. So they're living so, there, like they're building the new modern building. <laughs> I mean, they're okay. leaving. That's their place. All right. So let, let's 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 make a point about this. This this is a greenhouse, yeah. No, this is some people. The workers' home. The workers' home. Okay. Yeah, the workers' home. So let's let's watch a little bit of this film, and you can please tell us: Is the sound important, or can you talk? Uh, yes, yeah, the sound is not important. The, the image is uh, ironic. Okay, where, what is this? Where is this? When is this? When? Uh, this is heaven in uh, Zhengzhou, in the Henan province. Uh, one day, I, you know, I just uh, crossed this place. I saw this whole, this is uh, their room for the workers. I just uh, suddenly, you know, turned my heart to this kind of uh, class person. So I think my, uh, like my sister-in-law, she's working in the construction and we have some relatives working in the construction. So I think, oh my God, you know, they are building that more than building, but they don't even have a place to stay. Yeah, I made this video for installation to show how the people, you know, life, the treat of uh, human age. Yeah, that, that's the, the true story happening there. When did you make this film, Chell? Uh, I think it's around 2010. Okay. Yeah. Um, tell us about your experience uh, living in the in the quarantine house. Um, in other words, there was a, a greenhouse. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. That was um, for plants from out of yes. China, plants from outside China, foreign plants, and there was a greenhouse to quarantine these plants for some time period, right? Yeah. Uh, after I made that documentary film, the trip, I, I, I went back to Beijing and uh, I don't have too much money. So one day my friends told me they all have a greenhouse uh, uh, in Beijing. It's uh, uh, in Cao Chang Di. And uh, I went, I go to see the greenhouse. It's a, it's a you know, it's a typical greenhouse. And uh, there's the American Chinese own that place. So he's doing some business uh, for buying 
plants, flowers from all over China. So he used that greenhouse to quarantine the plants. And uh, I thought, okay, this is, uh, you know, because we don't have too much money. So my girlfriend and I, we decided to rebuild, you know, decoration. We design the space. We make a small roof uh, room there and uh, soon that place, you know, attractive so many artists and that place uh, finally have like around 50 people living there because the greenhouse has a very good light. So especially good for uh, painting or you're doing some, uh, it's very high sculpture make video, but in the raining day, you know, they, they are dropping the raining and there is a sound is terrible because the wall is very thin. The sound is very horrible. You, you could hear your neighbor talking about you, talking, criticize your work, horrible thing. <laughs> yeah, but it is a- Terrible. But it is a very, it's a very close community. Yeah. So, that cost a little, so we don't have to work too much. So we just spend the time to talk about a lot of things every day. Like, like you, you knock my door, I lock, I knock your door to come in to gossip. We, yes, at that time, that I know a lot of many, uh, uh, artists, what they do and what happened in this world. But in that, situation we are actually separate ourselves from the uh, minority uh, majority, society from the, from the, from the yeah. big society from the majority yeah, from the big society because we have the small group we have everything support you know people are know each other it's a, like a very close community yeah. now at the same time your family is still in the countryside yeah Yes, yes. At that time, uh, you know, we are, I, I, you know, I didn't connect with my family too much because, you know, they know I have a very terrible situation. You know, it's not like a normal person, ordinary person going to work. You know, they think, oh, what do you do? You know, concept art, what is concept art? You know, like a, like <laughs> some homeless person thinking that, you know, dreaming every day. So, you know, so you, you, you <laughs> lived, how long did you live in this glass house, in the greenhouse? Uh, how long? Seven years. You lived seven, seven years, years. Yes. In, the, in the greenhouse with how many people? Uh, uh, 15 people. 15? Uh, yeah, but it, yeah, 15. Five, five, 15. Five, 15 people. Five, zero. Yeah, but we, yeah, five, five, zero. Five, zero. Five, zero. Yeah. So everyone has their small room, but we have a, you know, it's a compound, just close to the compound. Yeah. And and this this greenhouse was it? Where was it physically? On the ground, on the earth, or in the building on the top? Where was this glass house? Uh, it's on the ground. On the ground, outside the, the ground. city. Outside the city. Uh, it's not the outside city. It's the suburban. You know, very close to the uh, city. It's a convenience. And uh, yeah, it's a, we call it art zone. So it's Iowa art zone. So yeah. your, your family was like, you know, our son is crazy or what? Yes, yeah, my mom, uh, uh, it support me. But uh, my mom said, okay, uh, son, I, I know, I don't know what you are doing, but uh, you seem like uh, okay. You're still alive or something like so. Whatever you do, I will support you. You know, every time I the credit card, you know, has owned a lot of money, and they call my mom, and my mom just pay the credit card for me. And she didn't comply. That I wish others, my mom did that. <laughs> my, my my mom, she's here. You see, Maria. When I, yeah. when, I when I went to prison. My mother put her house up for bail oh. to, so I could come out of the prison. But I, I didn't want her to do that. 
her brother wanted to do that because Andy Warhol wanted to do that to help me. But my family oh. said, no, no, we, we're going to help him because we're family. Family oh. stick together. <laughs> it's lovely to meet her. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Mom. You. Thanks, mm. Mom. It's interesting, Chow, that later on, Andy Warhol gave me two Mao Zedong drawings oh. to help with a project in Italy, another community project like this. He didn't give it to me. He loaned it to me, you know, like that. But um, anyway, so... It seems like what you said before is like you feel that you abandoned your family. Is that right? You feel uh, yes. You're... Yeah, because my family, you know, gave some uh, expect expectation for me because I'm the first uh, university student from that family. I'm uh, our village. Uh, only had few people getting the university. So they thought I might be doing something well. But, uh, you know, after graduate of 10 years, I didn't do anything. So, you know, <laughs> leaving that place as an artist, yeah. And uh, I really didn't like others person, you know, repay the family and help the villager yeah, so I feel the very guilty for that. So normally, you know, I don't go back to home for the uh, New Year celebration or something because it, it's very shame. Yeah, nothing to do, nothing won't do. Every time, you know, I, I felt my family, is, my, my village, my family is, you know, is disconnect with it with that word yes so uh, let me understand you felt ashamed yourself to go home yes i see i'm sorry to hear that that's very very yeah. hard very difficult yeah yeah very, very difficult yeah. how long ago was that uh, now you you're about 40 years now right yes yeah so maybe 10 years ago uh yes uh, I think it's just a few years ago. A few years ago, and uh, uh, I moved, you know, I, I finally want to do some commercial work. So right, right. something changed. And, uh, you know, I, Mafia. yeah. So I did some documentary film and uh, I have my new direction because, the, you know, that place demolished the, the the greenhouse demolished by the government because uh, I think it's 2018 or 2017. You know, I watched them use a machine to, you know, cut down my 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 place, and the security might catch me, threw me out, and the, that place demolished. So we don't have the place, you know, continue that work that that uh, continues that life so, so also 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 the, the they they destroyed is this the greenhouse they yeah tell, tell yeah. us what this one is yeah yes this one it's like uh you know uh that's you people yeah that's, that's me you. yeah so my feelings like uh, something wrong with there and something wrong with the government you know every the society has something wrong but I, I don't know how to say that. But I find one day I found if you are make a mistake for your bottom, and the mistake will continue to the end of the, your work. That's very small things will cause your emotion change or something. You know, it's the logic problem. So I want to show my feeling for that place and the the society, the government, something wrong with there. Yeah, but look, the picture, it's, it's okay, but it's actually it's something wrong. So I made a ironic, I said, okay, there's nothing wrong here. 
because people when they when they are make this mistake, they didn't realize they are mistaking at first. At the end, they will know. Oh, I made this mistake. So, Chow, it's a little complicated, okay? Because the government came and they destroyed your house, your living place. Fifty yes. people now homeless, right? Uh, not homeless. You know, fifteen people. They have to find a new place because, you know, some people some people are get famous in that place, so they moved out. Some people get in, but when they demolish, so people have to look in new place. But we cannot talk with each other convenience anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. in a way, they destroyed the um, structure of your community. Yes. Right. And at the same yeah. time, you you, you feel, um, you know, ashamed to go home. Yes. So you're really on your own somehow. Mm -hmm. How did you meet Ai Weiwei? How did that uh, change your life when you heard about this artist? Uh, uh, I, um, what was that picture? Uh, I met Ai Weiwei at the 2007. I uh, you know, randomly met him because I was working with an artist uh, uh, the foreigner, it's a foreigner who is a camera person, director. And uh, I tried to, someday, you know, that 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 cameraman introduced me to our way. And uh, uh, he said, you could do some assistant job there. That's my first time I'm, I'm working with our way. And uh, at that time, you know, I said I was, uh, brainwashed. I didn't know nothing. I just the out of the school has a little skill for edit, editing. So I working for him for a month. And uh, I suddenly realized, you know, something wrong with my information, something wrong with my brain. Because I never know. I never knew that the world is the, the, the real world. It is, you know, just from school teaching yeah so at that time i was a patriot you know i love this country or something like that but i saw i always work i see oh my god this is something i never knew so i want to learn i want to know what happened so i'm going back to see what happened for me yeah i found all oh, i was you know treated as a you know, like something not human, just something, yeah. So after that, you know, I finished the, the first month's work and uh, his project over and I just go to the trip. Yeah, that's the, the part of the- On the bike. Yes. yes. But what happened to your mind? You said that he blew your mind. He like opened your mind, changed your world. How so? Yes, because you know he's doing something uh, really smart. Not not only smart, you know, he's doing something very uh, justify. You know, help the people. I think he loves person. Uh, you know the people. Uh, you know, he's doing a lot of work. I never uh, approach that kind of thing. Well, what about uh, Ai Weiwei's sort of activism that this was so um, not just uh, not patriotic, it was extremely critical of uh, yes. state. I just, state. Uh, yeah. I was, you know, uh, because our school at that time, you know, we have no internet, we have no newspaper, we only read the newspaper from the the, the propaganda thing. But when I met way, I saw his work, you know, he, I follow his blog, and I'm working with him, 
as an assistant uh, for uh, a month that first time. And I found, oh, his criticized is very important because we never heard that, hear that kind of thing before. You know, nobody criticized in my history. Yeah. Right. So that's opened my mind, enlightened me. But I think what's what's interesting, Chow, is that link cultural activism like Emily and I and Margaret, you know, we we're working with the idea that it's not only criticism, but that art can lead to a new idea, a different way, solution way, not just uh, criticize, but also uh, transform somehow. Yeah. You know, as, as a community, you know? Yeah. So uh, it seems like you are also working in that, in that um, kind of way, that kind of spirit. Huh? Capacity. Yeah, in that capacity. Uh, you left home. Now, yeah. you, you know, t talk about y y the film you want to make, let's say about your, your family. For example, the family story. Yes, uh, the chair, the chairman. Uh, yes, I read a, I wrote a script. You know, one day I, I wrote one sentence. One day, you know, I found my neighbor bring back a chair. You know, that's a very heavy chair. At first, I thought, okay, that's that guy is you know pro at me. You know, you know have nothing to give back to your family. So I didn't know at first, you know, I didn't know what the meaning for me. But after 10 years, I think it's 12 years later, I suddenly realized that is very important because my it's kind of like something you want to give, but you don't have. So, so I read that story it's like the man, you know, robbery his boss because he didn't get paid from the boss. So he wants some gift to his children, to his family. So he saw the office has a big chair. So he tried to bring back the chair, go back to his family for the new year as a gift. I think that it is a metaphor, you know, something like I want to give back to my family, but I really don't have. So through the trip, I see, I want to show how the Chinese people, you know, the, the lower class to see this world because they are afraid of everything. You know, they believe they're, they're too poor. They have no, you know, power or something like this. So when they are traveling with a huge chair, this criminal talking to the show, that world, to an audience, so I read that. Uh, you wrote. Story. You wrote the story. Uh, yeah, I wrote that story. Is this yeah. the story that um, was in the Sundance competition? Uh, yes, uh, the two. Uh, uh, I got two rounds uh, in 2020 development development truck but it, the finally I didn't get in yet because translating story having to finish many many things yeah um just, just a minute uh, iowa series what is that iowa series those are the two pictures i just showed okay um installations in unusual places you have yeah does he want to show one of those? can we show some of these installations uh, yeah okay um you know, Chow, it's it's a very uh, you you know this idea of reinventing yourself. You know that idea, mm -hmm. reinvent self. Yeah. You you have to do that. You had to do that. Do you do you recognize that you're doing that, and now you're having a child yourself. Oh. Uh... You know. It's like you're creating a completely new life. <laughs> Maybe. 
<laughs> Literally, you're creating a new life. So that's also a way of giving back to your family. You know, you create more family. Yes. Oh, this this one, I want to say something. You know, the uh, the picture inside of this installation, actually the picture of my picture. So everyone, uh, you know, my villagers uh, all have the same family name. So because they are so living in the rural or remote place, I think nobody sees them. So even I want to see them, I have to, you know, to see inside of this place. I, I yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's something I want to say. They are really kind of like disappeared. So nobody can find them. It's very hard to see them. Yes. Yeah. Let's just leave that picture there for, okay, we're good. And then, yeah, that's good, that's good. Wow, and what, what is that now? Uh, this is a, it's an exhibition in the shower place. It's a public place, uh, you know, people doing shower there because Chinese people, you know, some people don't have their private uh, bathroom. So they have to go into the public place. So some of my own from Cure, uh, make this curation, this uh, exhibition. So I just show my radio because, uh, you know, at, this, at that time, I'm very interested for the outside information because the, uh, the, the, the block by the government, you know, they block Twitter, they block Google, they censorship every information. So I believe that information, you know, it's not true. So I want to try to get some new information, the true information. So I show this video. Yeah. Keep going. There you go. Okay. What? What is this? Where is this? What's happening? Uh, yeah, this is like, a, um, you know, uh, after, uh, I will be got arrested once and people are, you know, want to say something, but uh, I was afraid, you know, I have no, uh, I'm not brave to go into the street. So, but I think I, I have something to say. I have something, you know, I want to say something, but I don't know, you know, I, um, I'm i not brave to go into the public place. So I make a performance you know, in front of the street and I make some picture and I go back to home. I just keep that as a memory. You know, I think even I couldn't say something, but I still in my mind, something I want to say it out. Well, wow. yep. all right. Yeah, that's uh, uh, they all have a show, so I just uh, put my uh, to the show. Yeah. So this is uh, you're having a show right now, isn't isn't that true? Uh, yes. In the in a, a uh, group group show in New York. Uh, yeah, group show in New York. Uh, uh, one picture, uh, you know, it's called a social photography. Yeah, social social picture, photography. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, social photography. Now, look, this situation is quite interesting because this is like a um, plastic bag, right? Yes. And this is in where is this in Beijing or where? Uh, it's in front of the American consulate. Consulate. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, at that time, you know, I think uh, 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 I think uh, people are talking a lot, you know, talking about information, talking about the government protesting. But uh, after the talk, I, I believe the talk disappeared in the air. So I found this place and I think, okay, 
I catch some air to decoding what they are talking. They have right. to make fun for the government. Because yeah. you can control people, but you cannot control, you know, the disappearers thing. So right. after I collect this air in the bag, I just raise it to a flagpole and make some picture for fun. So you took this bag or and you made a flag from this bag. Yes. Yeah. Like a, a, a bag flag. Yes. And the bag flag is about information that cannot be controlled. Yeah. So is a kind of new uh, a, a new government, a new a new country <laughs> of, um, of, of of information, free information like that. Something like that? <laughs> yeah, something like that, but uh, you know, complex to to say, you know, something like uh, the the information is there, the, the everything is there. So the we can make the secret for the public. Yeah, to open the secret to the public because you know the air can contain many many things, but it's right. to the flag, it might for like it could be a public. Um, it sounds like your family was having some very difficult time um, with their business, and um, you, you you have some story to tell us about that, you know, and the film the film also about about torture. Yes, you want to talk a little bit about what was happening at home with the 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 factory and also the torture yeah uh i uh one day uh, i got a call from a lawyer friend he said he's doing some uh, uh job to help uh, mafia mafia family i thought okay what is mafia family in china you know uh, and he told me some story like a family called arrest someday and they put a name like a mafia family to torture them and let them say, oh, they are criminal. So uh, my friends asked me, do you want to, to know more? I said, okay, I want to know more. So I went there to make the documentary film there. So, you know, uh, I, I'm not the judge. I don't know what happened there, but uh, something is uh, truly kind of like some family, you know, very ordinary in China because the family, they are working together for some uh, stuff. Like my family, you know, we are unit together because, you know, we were the lower class person. So we have to unite together, such like my family, you know, working in the same factory and everyone, you know, put their energy in. So this make a connection with that mafia family, so-called mafia family. I think, okay, I just uh, interviewed the people, you know, they, they told me the details about how the police treat them. Yes, I, I made that record. I think, you know, I'm not sure what happened, real happened there, but I do. I'm so I sorry. Think, There's the sound coming from some place. Always unnerving when you find some place. Huh? Okay. You got yeah. it. Okay. So sorry. Please continue about about this yeah. mafia and and like that yeah. story. Yeah, I I went there to interview the people, but you know the story, uh, what happened with them, and please, it's very complicated. I'm not the judge, you know. I cannot find the, you know who's right, who's wrong. But I just record what they say because one one guy almost died. Uh, I think I filmed him a few days and he died. Before he died, he told me details, you know, the tortured by the police. Uh, and yeah, I just record that. Yeah. 
maybe you can show the, the last moment as the main to yeah. Oh, uh, I can hear you. I think you uh, turn off your, okay. Uh, Well, 就是马上就拔掉你把我挂起来了你救起来了就是当时我的修求是没办法动的就是当时这一下救的我去变差从拔掉就一直救到最低马上快四倍掉现在快八个小时快八个小时就是当时我关到了关到以后他就用水把你补
to make that film. But the censorship, you know, say no. Uh, some say the real reason, but some say no reason. There is no reason. And, uh, you know, so same as my situation, uh, some of my friends just out of China. So they are going to Germany, they are going to uh, Italy, America. So, uh, yeah, like this. But most people feel uh, it's very depression uh, society mm -hmm. now. Because if you are not afraid, afraid uh, freely to create it, so that means, you know, part of your life is cut down. Yeah. Chow, do many people commit suicide? Uh, some some are uh, suicide. And uh, I think 2017, uh, and I have two friends suicide. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one is a very good artist. Uh, um, when was the last time you were in China and why? Uh, my last day uh, in China is 2021 because of the COVID, you know, the lockdown and uh, yeah, a lot of things happened. My mom uh, got in the hospital, you know, the lockdown every day, uh, the hospital closed, reopened and uh, many things happened. So yeah, I decided I have to go because uh, before that few years, I have no film to do. But everyone, every night nice script, like three, you know, nobody invests that because I cannot get the permission. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, yeah, I also doing some commercial work, but I'm really boring for some propaganda page you, or the, something. The, yeah, the commercial work in China, you mean? Making television yes. commercials. Yeah, television commercials. But it's, it's not some sometimes it's not true, but uh, you know, sometimes you have to survive. Yeah. You know? So you made the propaganda yeah. films. You made propaganda films. No, not really. No. You know, uh, but it's some trend for the propaganda you know, made me very sick. I, I, I think uh, that hard. So it's like if you if you were, if you stay in China, you become toxic. You become sick from this um, all this all these conditions. And yes. you, what is your strategy now? You're going to stay in America? You think maybe ten years like that? What do you want to create or accomplish here? Uh, I plan to transform my uh, stories, like a uh, documentary stories or something to the feature film. So I want to stay here for a few years, you know, because uh, uh, I finished the writing, prepare, and uh, someday, you know, when I, I'm ready to fight with something, I will go back. But now, you know, I'm very, uh, depressed, depressed, because the new life, you know, uh, it 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 has to start from a new place, and also, you know, in China, that's why, uh, you know, if you are brave, if you want brave, that costs a lot, because that is the real thing. It's not. Here, like you want to go to the street, you just go to the street. You have to, uh, yes, like uh, once you know, uh, I make the documentary film, and uh, the 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 police told me, if you don't want your mom come here to report you are missing or died, you have to leave. It seems like this, so yeah. There are many things that you know that you cannot tell us about. You are not able to tell us some of the horrible yes. things that you know about and that you have yourself experienced. 
and we don't want to risk your safety today by telling these things. But everybody here, I'm sure, has something to ask you about or comment to you. And the last part of our show, we want everybody to have the opportunity to uh, connect with you. But just now, it's the first time that Emily and I heard that you are depressed sometimes. And, um, you know, we're all here for you. This is also community and also family. So don't lose, you know, the, the light that you, usually you have so much uh, joy and happiness. So we yeah. want to see more and we want to help you with the shovel, you know, dig out, dig out, <laughs> dig out the depression, dig it out and put it in the sunlight and make plants in the greenhouse together with everybody. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, yes, that is, a, is a, like a political depression because the pressure is like a surround you. And especially you see something, you cannot say it out. And it's very depressed. But uh, here is, uh, yes, but for now, I, I, you know, every day I read the news in China, I just, uh, connect with my emotion because some of my family members still there. Some people, you know, they are not lucky like me come here. They are still fighting. So I want to support them, but I, you know, I couldn't do that. That is uh, also some pretty sad for myself. I hope I could do something, but yeah, but too complex. Yeah. Chow, let the people here speak with you and mm -hmm. feel, please feel that everybody here, I believe, would do what they can to try to help you help your friends. And like that. Mm. So there's um, interactivity now. Please begin. Anybody who wants to say hello or make a comment or ask a question. Um, thank you so much everyone for being here and uh, creating this, this environment. Ron. Yes, hey, how's it going? Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for uh, speaking candidly with us. Uh, very nice. I, I hear uh, things about the Chinese police in America. Are you afraid of that? These things that you show, are you afraid of uh, the Chinese police in America? Yes. So we are. So my, I, I'm very concerned about this because Chinese society in here, the community is, uh, you know, because people are uh, speaking the same language, so people connect with each other. So if there here is has some police here, that is will you know, really give the pressure to the people, the activist people or artists, because we have family member there and uh, everyone has a family member probably in China now. So if the police come here, that's a big pressure. Well, please be careful. <laughs> be very cautious. <laughs> we hate to, Thank to you. see something uh, happen, you know. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, just by the way, Chow, uh -huh. Ron is in um, northern Minnesota. Michigan. Uh, I'm sorry, northern Michigan. <laughs> northern Michigan. And um, I'm sure Ron would be happy to greet you sometime over there. Absolutely. And show you this Thank place you. and introduce you to his family there of Native Americans. We live in a uh, million acre national forest. So if you need a place to hide, <laughs> very very uh, quiet community around here see you tomorrow <laughs> someone else have some to comment Daniel Subkoff thanks Daniel thanks so much Ron beautiful hi Chow nice to see you again hi yeah 
Why don't you um, tell, tell Daniel how you how, how you guys know each other? Oh, we, we met in the performance that you were videotaping. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Down in, down in the uh, financial district. Um, so I guess I just had a question of now that you've been in, in the U.S. for a while and you've seen the kind of uh, tumultuous political environment here and, uh, you know, like, I, I, you know, I understand that information is so tightly controlled in China, and that's and that's part of the issue that you're that you're really interested in you know, communicating in various ways. Um, but here, it's such a you know, it's almost like the information is so completely uh, overly free in a sense that there that that we've had like the whole. Uh, almost infectious quality of fake news and you can't filter through information, you know, all the information you can't even filter through it and figure out what's real and what's not in this sense. And, there, and so there's a lot of political um, uh, capacity for, uh, you could say bad actors to manipulate information and kind of spin things as we've seen and kind of create conflict through, uh, you know, the paranoia of fake information and things. I'm just wondering your perspective, witnessing how information is functioning here so radically differently if you have kind of a perspective or analysis of of that and the differences and the pros and cons you know uh for me uh the american is very new for me so i uh for example i um i get in the mood to learn the american history american uh today what happened here I'm still learning, but my my focus is on um, you know the system, how it works, because I know how the Chinese system works because that is depend depend on the dic uh, you know the the dictatorship now, so the capitalism in China it changed to the uh, uh, country capitalism, so I want to learn more here. To make uh, make it clear what happened, and uh, that's my my focus now. Uh, I I couldn't you know say something the opinion about the, what happened in America because the information is it's overwhelming for me. I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah I understand. You know, there's a re there's a, a really good. Um... A book that, uh, if you're if you're open to reading actual like you know some actual history, um, I found to be and I haven't finished it yet, but I found to be quite compelling. It's called The Dawn of Everything: uh, A New History of Humanity uh, by David Graeber, and um, who recently you know a lot of people here probably know of him because he was like an anarchist activist that was uh, involved with the um wall street protests and but david wengrow is the other author is the co-authored and it's really interesting because there's um it's kind of like rethinking a lot of things we take for granted about about history and there's a there is a lot of parts about uh early american history and uh how influential actual actually like in, indigenous philosophies mm -hmm. and social social dynamics and culture was upon uh like even like how we experience the you know America now and and our and even our the organization of our government and uh, focus on uh, on individualism and all these things and freedoms and that I found it really fascinating is kind of helps me better understand my own country in a way just seeing some of this history that's kind of been underemphasized or totally almost censored or, or overlooked um, it's a great book so you might be interested yeah thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I'll just say a, a, a word about, um, you know, the, the narrative, uh, how the narrative is controlled even around the world. Uh, you know, um, Chow, that mm -hmm. now we have so much um, heavy challenges and heavy problems, right? Yeah. But yeah. It feels like too much. Feels like we, we cannot... We cannot change it, you know. It's going like apocalypse, you know. 
so what we're trying to do also in our work is to create another narrative like yeah. there is something we can do you know but yeah. it seems like the individual in in america anyway and in the west the the emphasis is self is very important self importance yeah. this yeah i agree becomes, this becomes a problem because then one self is more important than the other self everybody important right yeah but community is important community can change the situation right this idea this yeah. idea so uh, speaking to what daniel is saying here we have so much different information different version of reality so all these different powers controlling yeah. reality how you see reality so it's brainwashing opposite of brainwashing brain confusion that's easy to control the people when there is confusion yeah. a different kind of brainwash <laughs> just just saying i'm just saying that's true no daniel yeah there's a um you know as a practicing hypnotist you know there's actually a, like a type of hypnosis induction that's a con like a Wait, confusion slow, slow Confu down a minute slow, yeah. slow down did you say as a practicing hypnotist yes yeah all right it's one of it's, it, it's something that it's one of my things that i do um and um there's a confusion induction technique which is basically kind of short circuiting the the normal kind of mental chatter and and linear processes and, and and analytical processes that we're habituated to through like uh wow basically a re repetitive pattern of uh of disjointed words and phrases that'll just kind of like short circuit that aspect of the mind and so it's like it's it's an induction technique specifically for like people that are a bit more um in the analytical side of you know the type so just letting you know that you know in, in the larger picture of our greater society we're all kind of being subject you know subjected to a confusion <laughs> hypnosis technique in a way just by the a constant onslaught you know of all these various uh, uh influences through media these days potentially just following up on what you're saying Perhaps some I'd like to say as well, um, and thank you for speaking to us and trusting us to listen, um, you know, openly. And um, of course, your safety is important also. But I, I think that we live in countries where there are a lot of, as, as John was saying, um, there is an official narrative. And if you do not... Um, buy into the official narrative if you don't believe it and if you challenge it you can put yourself in danger and um of course i grew up i mean i grew up in south africa um mm -hmm. where it was very risky to challenge the system of apartheid that means people being um separated according to color whatever color they were they had to live in different areas they couldn't mix they um, everything was separated, schooling and public transport and places you could go to and so on. And um, But also there was um, a dominant class and there was a class that was more oppressed, you know, if you mm -hmm. like. And it was also color-based. And when people became aware of um, the system that that a strong country was resting on the shoulders or apparently strong country was resting on the shoulders of, of others and that it was unjust and they started to speak out, they would be threatened if they wrote literature, made art and so on, theater or anything to criticize it, they would be censored, their books would be banned they could be arrested and many had to leave the country and go into exile. And they did because they didn't want to compromise their values, but there was, there was no way around. Um, and even I left my country 
um, partly for that reason, it's complicated to explain now how and the details, but I know that um, it was inevitable. And if you look at the narrative in France, where, where I live now, um, they have also, there are also stories and truths that are completely suppressed by society. In fact, so suppressed that I think that a con not even a contemporary artist today can actually make a work of art that represents both sides of the story or that would be acceptable in the country. It's impossible, impossible. The subject cannot be handled. And, and that subject, which, 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 cons, which involves a kind of civil war in the country that was suppressed as well as not called a war and is, is, is called independence of a colony, if you like, um, you cannot challenge the narrative. There were so many people badly treated, badly treated. Um, there was exodus, there was exile, there was um, uh, um, ex, expatri no, um, ex, what's the word I'm looking for? Not expatriation, when you, expropriation, expropriation. There was, um, uh, rejection. There was so, but it's all um, hidden under the blanket of um, uh, criticism of colonization, if you like, because that's now the clean story. And they're just, and I think in America too, in France too, we we can't talk about what the colonizers did, you know, at different points in history all over the planet, mm -hmm. because, I mean. People in France were, especially English teachers, at risk of losing their jobs for being wokest. And they called us Islamo, Islamo leftists, what they call Islamo gauchiste. Okay. If you were actually vaguely wokest. So I think that dominant narratives, and I mean, I, I'm not, I can't even begin to imagine in a power like China. But I think dominant narratives are extremely difficult to, to dismantle. And sometimes it takes being on the outside to see things differently and get a different perspective. And, you know, unfortunately, and I didn't realize, but I think our own students suffer from the risk because we have many Chinese students that come also to France and then they don't always want to return. But they also, I know that they are afraid of each other because of spies, that there are spies that they may, some say that the Chinese students want to infiltrate the French system and give information, la, la, la. And others say the Chinese students don't want to go back when they discover a certain amount of freedom and then that there are spies that also could tell on them. It's so complicated to yeah. maintain power you know, when 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 actually it's leaking, when when in fact it's um it's not it's not really holding where where you have to so so I think that you art is the most incredible way, I think, because of metaphor, what you can say with your bag and the wind, what you can say, nobody can say you're criticizing China because it's 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 really difficult to say that. And I find that the artists, I mean, have other artwork here by Chinese, a Chinese um, artist in Paris, who at the moment has a really interesting exhibition because he's making um, he's making classical art, uh, European classical art, but he's putting Chinese figures in it, like in the Annunciation and so on. In my mess here, I'm sure I could find one of them. But the point is that it's obviously too critical to people who are thinking. <laughs> Uh, in in those terms, this for example, this uh, one, okay, I yeah, okay, I or, or this one, mm. you know, um. the, you know, the thing is that, but who? How can the government? How can the government really say that these <sighs> pieces of art are criticizing China? It's really difficult. And I, I think that um, in literature, and I think in South Africa, the best writers, the very best who didn't get arrested and who didn't get their books banned and who won Nobel Prizes, 
they did it because they could use metaphor and in metaphor and in art, they were free. So it's, a, you know, there's some yeah. space that can navigate freedom there as well. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know, but I think that probably you are, you're walking a fine line, but you, at the same time, I know you, there's honor and shame and you don't want to, um, to disparage your own people. And at the same time, you can see that there's a difference maybe between the people and the government and that it's, it's the government is so much power. It's so difficult to challenge power, you know, at any level. So I think it's very interesting what you, the space of freedom that you have taken in in, in many ways, you know, and and I wish you yeah. like, you know, yeah. I wish you safety and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the open your window, open windows for others, open doors and windows for others. Thank you. I, yeah, I wish, I could be some example for other people, you know, through the long way and my feeling, my, you know, my fear, my shame, thinking, but it continues even take a long time, but to, to thinking about something is very important to thought the thing is very important. Chow, you know your 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 trip on the motorcycle. Uh huh. For the bicycle. It's not over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not over. You're in a bigger a bigger space, but the same shit is happening. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's okay. You you're gonna keep on going. Margaret has, oh, yeah. Margaret, you're, you're, yeah. Uh, you have to un unmute. Yeah. Oh God. Are you there, Margaret? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Chow. So wonderful to hear more about your work, as we just met briefly in New York. So it's it's really really wonderful to to hear more about what you're doing. And you know, I was wondering about two things, like. Do you feel like you have a, like you are on a mission? <laughs> because I mean, when you, when I hear you talk about your work, uh, and, and if I think about the the larger narrative, of course, I don't live in the states, but I mean, uh, you know, the economic and political uh, uh, power fight, you know, between the U.S. and China, you know, and uh -huh. and all of that that is. Uh, the the you know the uh, the power struggle that this is causing right so uh, I mean these are these are like very very big systems but and you are uh, you are one individual uh, making very important almost like a very very fragile and very important marks right like how do you how do you feel where 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 your place is i mean do you feel like uh i need more support are you are you searching support of like other uh, perhaps chinese artists not only in the us but also uh you know in in other countries outside of europe um yeah i'm wondering i know you know an artist who is based in amsterdam a uh, high thing um, yeah. And I'm sure you're in contact with with other, uh, you know, Chinese artists. Like, do you have a conversation? Uh, sometimes we we had some discuss about uh, the situation, but I think uh, moved out from Beijing. The 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 thing is the communication with uh, with others. Like even whatever with uh, Chinese artists or foreign art, artists, uh, I think um, I want to make more, make them um, more open to people to talk about, uh, you know, make my to make my situation to to compare where my situation it is, because 
I want to continue to working with film and uh, uh, concept art. But I think the culture, you know, if you cut down, cut out your culture, so the connection, you know, is it's it's it's, it's, it's stopped, and uh, that's very confused, and also, you know, still need a time to deal with this problem. Yeah, but there's for the countries that you know the the American China something like this. You know, but as a independent, you know, people, I think this country, you know, treats the people as the, uh, the I mean, if China treats the people, you know, they has a bigger problem. But it, that's the, the fundamental thing to thinking about and uh, what's the result it is, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, when I hear you talk, I feel that you are on a like a, a, a on a very important mission because I mean, you you share something with us that that you know is it is not uh, uh, it is not generally shared. You know, I mean, the 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 problem of the the population that is invisible is of course uh, I mean that's also uh, that's also you know in the states or that's in 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 many areas of the world where. Uh, you know the the uh, the people that live in the countryside uh, are are kind of you know kind of invisible, uh, and especially in this climate now of of polarization and of of uh, also political correctness, where uh, you know it, I mean at the moment things are uh, so being simplified, right? Like you're getting these big chunks of like uh yeah this belongs here and this this belongs there so so then uh a certain uh, problem is uh getting a color <laughs> right and uh yeah so 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 it becomes very um a very complicated um yeah maybe that's uh who is the, the one who was just talking about hypnosis yeah <laughs> he's not here anymore uh, maybe Daniel, this is the kind, Dan, yeah, Daniel. Daniel. Yeah. yeah, maybe this is the kind of uh, the kind of hypnosis that he was just talking about. Like, um, and and I think that's why uh, John and and Emily. I mean, you you started this uh, institute. It's so incredibly important to bring together community. Uh, you know, to grow a community of uh, of people who are. Um, so that so that we can be a little bit <laughs> more present, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, Margaret is. We are creating a narrative here, and you can do it. You know, just make up a narrative. <laughs> you, you can do it. Just do it. You begin. Akane. Akane? Yes, hello. I like to talk okay. with uh, a little bit uh, with Joe. Uh, thank you for sharing me this uh, <clears throat> very emotional documentary. Uh, it's touched to me as, I don't know, as an Asian, <laughs> for example, I have some uh, we Japanese have some uh, very big uh, historical story with China. And uh, I was uh, also like, uh, went to European country to study art and came back to Japan. And uh, it was kind of a cultural shock when I was 21st years old, one years old. So, there, I after I went to New York to <clears throat> meet Margaret, and uh, I <laughs> was also different cultural shock in there, and I felt that uh, Japan is very uh, behind of the European art scene. That was my first impression when I was young, and I came back to Japan, and now I 
really learn about how the European um, culture inspired to Asian. And also we have to learn how um, Asian countries are connected uh, many years, like 2000 years. Uh, the Japan and China is, is uh, cultural connecting for 2000 years, for example. Mm -hmm. China was also very uh, our teacher in, for Japanese uh, culture. The Chinese was our, uh, Chinese culture was our, um, well, professor to, <laughs> to create our culture. So uh, in, in this perspective, uh, um, for example, I am, uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, guilty mind that that Japan uh, <clears throat> was colonial, colonized many Asian country, for example. Mm -hmm. So yeah. my background is kind of uh, on that situation, our economy in Japan was expanded. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, I felt, I feel like I have to, give them back something to, to apologize, for example, this kind of <laughs> thing I have. And uh, I have a uh, many friends uh, from China in, in Kanazawa, where I live. They are uh, mm -hmm. students in art school or the uh, sometimes tourists I meet. And the uh, student in art school, they are also kind of uh, hiding their uh, deeply emotion in, in, in they had in, in, in China. For example, they like to come to Japan, but they have to go back to, uh, to support their family, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are creating some craft, craft things like lacquerware, pottery, or some kind of uh, painting on like a very traditional uh, uh, me method they learn. And uh, actually I have a running, I have, I'm running a gallery, small space in my house. And uh, one of Chinese uh, guy uh, presented his work in my space. And um. uh, Actually, he met one Japanese and they got married. <laughs> <laughs> this this uh, woman go to China this March to live with him. So in actually we are telling her that be careful <laughs> to <laughs> in China to not speak too much about the uh, you know political things uh, some some yeah. kind. So mm. I I like to ask you to if uh, have you ever been in Japan or you are, are you interested to come to Japan or something like this? Yes, I really want to go to Japan. <laughs> yeah? yeah, have you ever? Yeah. Never. Yes, yeah. uh, I I never been to Japan, but I really want to go to Japan to see. Yeah, to yeah. Uh, I at the youth side, you side. Know, you know, I want to share a story with you about, uh, uh, you know, I was sad, you know, uh, I was uh, brainwashed in the school. Mm. And uh, uh, I want to share with you something about the Japan, Japan. Okay. You know, in my high school, there have a guy and he repeat the, the last year five times. So mm. three years high school and he repeat five years. That's eight years. So my school gave a slogan in the wall. You know, they said to learn to study that guy who fight eight years for the physical or something. Mm. <laughs> Did you? So this is a it's a true story, but for me, it's, you know, it's something really important I, I i don't know did that make sense you know because no, china, no, no, it, it doesn't make sense please explain yeah, to us yeah let little, me explain little, little more because china 
with uh, had had a war with Japan eight years. Mm. So they use that example to metaphor. They use the students study eight years to metaphor the political scene, like um, mm. China fight with Japan eight years because you know uh, that is a difficult time. But that student study in the high school eight years for college is difficult thing. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know what? In Japan, uh, uh, we, yeah, we we don't yeah, learn I, much about the uh, yeah. I yeah. I didn't mention about the what happened in Japan or the war or something. I just mean, you know, the school use every detail to put the political things to students' mind. You know, that is an example how they are. Put the different things for the, you know, details for one very simple thing because that guy is studied eighty years. Yeah, we know eighty years is hard for him, but why they connect with Japan or something? So that kind of things happen every day in my school, high school. So that's the example why I don't believe the so. Someday, you know, the turn point comes. I think, oh my God, this is so many information. I never, you know, as a young children, you don't know that. Yeah, that's the story. But the, thank you. Say something about this, but I, I, personally, I don't have any, uh, you know, thinking about the the war because we don't know uh, exactly what happened there. Yeah, because that's, we, that's the point. I don't believe the government is safe. <laughs> yeah. uh, very interesting because uh, that's the point that the, we have uh, many Asian artists now, like mm. uh, Ho Zenin is in Singapore, is started uh -huh. to make uh, some very interesting um, film about about between Japan and, and China, for example. Uh -huh. Mm. Why happened? Why war second happens? Sometimes we don't learn in Japan much about mm. the uh, the relation situation with the Asian in in our historical uh, study. So this is also the problem. So I I really appreciate mm. that you are mentioning about the uh, that that expressing about the political things it's it's very we we cannot see in japan for example this kind of uh, documentary yeah. so i really like to show your work <laughs> someday <laughs> in, in yeah. japan with with my chinese friends uh, also this is interesting for me thank you thank you well, <laughs> uh, uh, akane and, yes. and now if if there's anything that emily and i can do with our institute to help Mm. Bring Chow to Japan. That's great. <laughs> you tell us. Yeah. You let us know. Why not? Yes. Actually, I'm planning to make a artist in residency next year. So maybe I'm yeah. going to be thinking about it. Yes. Yeah, I would love to go. <laughs> Thank you. We have a large group in Japan too that come to our ceremony every year, our Sundance ceremony. So we have a large group in Japan. Also, that uh, I'm sure there'll be many that will be uh, happy to host too. Wow, that's amazing. Well, when when you guys is it the Sundance event? Yes, uh, in, in, I in understand that they they're dropping the ban on traveling to America from okay. different countries. The vaccination ban. That's why we haven't had it for three years because of the Japanese group. They don't uh, want to get the vaccinations. <laughs> so they haven't came for three years. So this year, uh, as of April, I think the band drops off. And so our Sundance is uh, scheduled to be on this year. So Okay, just, just a minute. I'm so sorry. Um, Daisuke uh, writes in the chat, uh, thanks to Chow for the talk. I'm not so sure if it's relevant here, but I have been surfing and organizing to support the freedom of speech 
in Myanmar after the coup. And I'm organizing an online symposium in March. Please join. Um, um, and it's great to learn about, about um, Miao's work. Okay. All right. We have a few things in the chat box that we can share later. But thanks, you guys. And Ron, if the Japanese group comes in July, maybe Chow and we can all join you guys. Up oh, there please, in, please, on, yes. On yeah. Please, yes, we'd be happy and to have even you. Is Isabel, maybe she's still around. We can get her up I there to upper. <laughs> your, your, friend, your friend from New York uh, City was gonna come too, the black gentleman, I can't remember his name, but he was gonna come too. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> July. Yeah, it's in July. So I, as soon as I have a date, I will, I'll, I will let you know. We have our next Zoom meeting on the 14th of next month, and we should have a confirmation on the actual date that the ceremony is going to be held. So, thanks, Ron. You're welcome. What do you, you say now? Yeah. You want to say something? Say thank you. Good night. Should we say good night now? Um. You guys, just uh, if you need to have some interactivity, Margaret and Chow are in contact. Uh, you guys can connect with Akane, etc. Ron will let us know what's going on if we want to get everybody together and inform people about July. Um, let me just check one more chat. Uh, link to Chow's exhibition. Daniel, it's in Manhattan. Emily knows. Uh, Emily knows the uh, what is it? Um, carriage. Carriage tree. Carriage tree. Yeah. Carriage. Yeah. Carriage. Where is it? Carriage. You put it in the chat, yeah. In the exhibition, yeah. Good, Emily. She can do that. Thanks, Vera. So good night, Vera. Good night. Eba in Vienna, Margaret. Have a good evening for the others, because for me it is good night. <laughs> Are you putting in the link to Charles' exhibition there? Uh, Emily's doing it. Oh, she's doing it. Okay, great. Eba, so, so nice Thank seeing you. you. Thank you, Chow. <laughs> yeah, Chow. Nice to meet some of you as well. See you again. Nice, nice you, seeing you. Thank you, Thank you, Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. And thanks. Come so on, Daniel. <laughs> See you guys soon. Ciao. What a wonderful show. Bye. Thanks, Chow. Congratulations. Thank you, John. Thank, Thank you. you. See you Bye -bye. soon.